Trigon is one of those quintessential 90s anime, one that so many people talk about as one of the best ever. Up there with Cowboy Bebop and My Little Pony. That last one was a joke. Here today on Anime Friday, we are going to talk about Trigon's method of storytelling, specifically talking about the comedy and the show's brilliant final scene. So, spoilers ahead. Before we begin, we have to preface our discussion with some basic information. Trigun was released in 1998 to much critical acclaim by critics and fans alike. The director of the series, Sadashi Nishimura, who would later to go on to direct Hajime no Ippo, and Yushiro Totoro's remake was the driving force behind the anime. And surprisingly, it didn't do that well in Japan, but just like most of the 90s anime I love, American audiences really love this anime as it aired on Cartoon Network's Toonami Block. And this is not surprising at all, because Toonami is the reason so many anime today are so well known and beloved by many. Trigun follow as our main character, Vash the Stampede, a man with an outstanding bounty on his head, 60 billion double dollars, dead or alive. Vash is wanted for destroying an entire city, laying waste to everyone and everything in it. One would think this man must be the ugliest, meanest, cold-hearted SOB there is. But in reality, he's a gentle, caring man who loves donuts, helps out when he can, and is generally more a hero than a humanoid typhoon which he earned the nickname for. Is there any truth to these claims that he destroyed this city? This is Trigun. What Trigun does is something unique and not seen a lot in anime. Action and comedy. Sure, we do get anime with both action and comedy in them, but not a lot that are like Trigun. And Trigun is so successful in pulling this blend off for many reasons. The comedy is funny and really endears you towards these characters while taking the edge of being in a desolate at Wasteland off. And while the art and animation being too overly simple at times still succeeds in showing off the details of a gunfight. But it also just doesn't jam these two things together so you have a funny action scene. No, they know when to play up these cards perfectly. Many times in the show the comedy is used to serve as a break or a cooldown point for an action scene. This is a good use for it as most of the action has Vash involved and a huge part of Vash's personality is he's a goofy lighthearted fellow. And to really understand better, we'd have to talk about these two aspects separately. So starting with comedy, the show does something a lot of anime has trouble with doing, and that's simply following through on a joke and giving it a payoff. Let's take for example in episode 1, Vash takes out some bad guy hiding underground. Odd choice, but it makes sense for Vash because he is this outlandish character as we've established. You'd expect him to dodge bullets by zigzagging in the air or tap dancing to dodge them. That's Vash, so it makes sense. Anyway, so Vash scavenges for some ammo and he finds a bullet for his revolver. We then get a comedic but short and sweet flashback to when he was firing his gun, and alas, he's out. And what does he do? He reacts the way you expect Vash to react. With an overly cartoonish face and him screaming at the top of his lungs at his newfound position. And what happens when he's caught? He throws a gun at the baddie calling him out. And this is so funny because it's unexpected. It's simple comedy because instead of pulling out this gun or running or anything else, he takes the gun and throws it on a whim, completely subverting someone's expectations of the scene. That's just one cherry-picked example, but this is how Trigun follows through on their jokes usually. Simple setup of him not wanting to be caught, he gets caught so he screams out and throws a gun. It's simple, not complicated at all, so that every viewer can grasp the scene and the payoff of the joke. It's a simple subversion of expectations, which can be argued as being a majority of what comedy is. I mean, think about it, what makes comedy comedy? Setups? and payoffs. And what is the payoff usually? Something you'd never expect, or something you would expect but never think would happen. Just as an example, here's a joke from a comedian, Jerry Corley. I don't know who this guy is, but this is an example. I have a five-year-old and I'm trying to teach her to tie her shoes, and she's always saying, Dad, I can't, I can't. And I looked at her and I said, stop it. I'm not your father. Trigun's comedy ultimately falls under this format and continues it throughout the whole series. But what I found that I like so much about Trigun and Vash in particular is that they let this character be funny and at the same time, they let him have his deep dark past. In many ways, Vash is one of the most human characters in Trigun. You get to see these different sides of Vash. You get the side that's funny and goofy. You get the side of him who wants revenge against Nine. 
lives. And you get that side of him where he is looked at as a monster for leveling a whole city as the humanoid typhoon. The show through its comedy and writing lets you explore more avenues of this character, and this essential piece of Trigun's puzzle may be the most important. Think of it this way, who is Vash without his comedic side? Without that, he's an emotionless badass who had a lot of random things happen to him. So now he's even more brooding, I guess? Well, on the other hand, what happens when you take away the fight in Vash? The humanoid typhoon, the stampede, his will to stop knives, well, you still have Vash and his colorful personality. But, when it comes to Trigun's action, there is an elephant in the room you'd have to discuss here. The series animation is rather outdated at this point, and there are only a few handful of examples I could point to as good examples, so I'm going to discuss the final big action scene in the show, Vash vs. Knives. And even by today's standards, this scene is absolutely some of the best, most well-directed action I've ever seen personally. Everything about it, the pacing, the animation, the direction, it's all so memorable. Even the story it tells is a beautiful one. All of the characters in this series at this point have been wrapped up. Wolfwood is dead, Millie and Merrill's arc are written and closed, and it's been revealed Vash and Knives are brothers who are somewhat less than human despite their appearance. In fact, they're over 130 years old at this point. The only option left for Vash is to confront Knives and deal with this issue, as throughout the whole series he has constantly ran away from him, not doing the one thing he promised Rem to do, which was protect Knives. But with Wolfwood's cross full of mercy, he goes to Knives in a green meadow, something we've only seen once in the whole series before, and that was at night. You'd think knowing Knives, how he killed Rem's relative in cold blood, what he wants to do to the human race, and how he wants to make them extinct, well, a green meadow in the middle of a desert planet is the last place you would expect he would be. It's a brilliant subversion of expectations, and not only that, Knives and the way he dresses is so alien to this world, it's almost like he's perverting it. Vash comes in body armor and a red coat, and Knives is still wearing his skin-tight suit from the ship. The setup to this action scene is beautiful, and sets the stage for their final battle perfectly. And as we cut back from the final insert card, they start their fight. Knives' gun fire digs into the tree Vash is taking cover behind. The sight of these bullets piercing the tree is fantastic, and for the time was even more impressive as it showed the brutality of these super weapons. Small details like the table being destroyed by gunfire and a splinter cutting Vash's leg are nice touches as well. As the fight moves on, Vash shoots and hits Knives' revolver, but when Knives shoots back, it's revealed that he is controlling the weapon via wire. He uses this to get the jump on Knives by using his concealed machine pistol to rain down gunfire. Vash then uses the wire to pull back his revolver. And this is a good example of why this scene is so good. They used very inventive and unique ways to get the fight to not only last longer, but also using logic that you would expect these two to use. It's a cool visual as well. We know Vash very well at this point, and he wouldn't take this fight lightly at all. Neither is Knives. They're not playing the evil villain who does stupid things here. Knives is treating this very seriously, which I like a lot. Knives then literally throws rounds at Vash and then fires at them, creating a distraction for him to rush Vash behind cover. Knives, now with the higher ground, fires and they both shoot their guns out of their hands, creating a stalemate. With Knives without a weapon and Vash's wire snapped, they both make a run for it and grab their weapons. Now pointing them at each other's head and sweating bullets, they both activate the reloading mechanism, sending 12 freed rounds into the air. Both grab a bullet, load the weapon blindly, and hope their first bullet is the one they'll need to win this fight. And what can you even say about this sequence that you haven't already saw? There is a reason why this is my favorite action scene in all of Trigun. This sequence quantifies it almost perfectly as to why I think that way and why I love Trigun so much. Just them deloading their weapons and playing a game of roulette while they're sweating profusely is a great, unforgettable image to see. Also, just another small little detail, there is no music playing throughout any of this action scene, creating more drama for the viewer. We then see Knives activate his weapons 
special power, turning his arm into an alien weapon to destroy Vash. But as Knives unleashes his final attack on Vash, Vash uses his own counter and absorbs the blast into his own weapon. They both then fire at each other, creating an orb that looks a lot like Ying and Yang. Vash then says that his weapon's existence is to cancel out the other, which is much like Vash's relationship with Knives. He is meant to keep Knives safe, and from letting him turn into the monster he, well, turned into. But there are still more, when Knives fires four rounds into Vash and takes his own revolver. Knives then uses the ultimate combination of both Ying and Yang, so to speak, in a way, and is ready to fire upon Vash. But Vash is then reminded by the spirit of Wolfwood to use his only option, Mercy. Vash then picks up Mercy and fires into Knives, winning the fight. There is so much symbolism here, but not only that, it's a final beautiful send-off to Wolfwood. Wolfwood may be gone, but his impression of the people he left behind hasn't been forgotten. He left behind the one thing Vash needed to defeat Knives. He didn't need the super weapon that Knives created, but he used the weapon that just a normal man, Wolfwood, used. It probably wasn't intentional, but my theory is that, in a way, Vash using this weapon represents his trust in the human race, where Knives obviously hates the human race and would rather use the weapons that he created, which he perceives is better than the ones that humans use. Altogether, Trigun blends its use of comedy and action in ways that are tasteful and make sense to the viewer. They don't just throw in a joke because they may have won an episode without one or wants to play to its audience. And that goes for the action as well, but what makes Trigun what it is, is how it blends it into the story and its characters. What would Trigun be without its comedy? What would it be without its action? What would it be without that final action scene? Well, the answer is it wouldn't be Trigun because once you take away one of those things, you strip its identity, you strip it entirely of its identity. What's a bike with one wheel? It's not a bike anymore. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Remember that Anime Friday will continue with season five in March as I need some time to prepare. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and click on one of these videos if they interest you. Bye bye.